Welcome to Meet the Authors. I'm your host, Dr. Philip Levin. Here we talk about writing and local authors on the coast presenting all sorts of people for uh, your enjoyment. Today we have two guests. We have Patty Paris from Mobile who has put out a couple of books recently. She's put out a memoir uh, about a fundraiser fellow over there, uh, someone who's very famous, a Mr. Teague, who has done uh, uh, businesses that you all have heard of and done some great fundraisings in bringing the bowling championship to Mobile as well as golf tournaments. She also is doing memoirs about her family, which was a very interesting topic we all should think about for the legacy for our family. Our second guest is a well-known local personality and celebrity, Andrea Yeager, who has columns and the Sun Herald uh, on a regular basis and does a lot of other writing and editing that we're all interested in hearing about her whole career. She's been a writer her whole life, as I have myself. I'm looking forward to talking to you today about some of my own work. On every show I'm going to feature something. Today is of course a Christmas show with my good friend St. Nick and so it's time to get out and do that Christmas shopping and support your local authors. A lot of our books are covered in the major bookstores and the little small ones nearby as well. This book in particular is the one I'd like to feature today. This book is The Mississippi Gulf Coast and Neighboring Sites. This came out a couple of years ago, and it has a collection of 25 different sites for people to write on. Now, the way that this came about is that I was president of the local writers group, Gulf Coast Writers Association, for many years. And we started putting out these anthologies, and everyone could pick out for this book a site that they liked. So it wasn't assigned work, and we have all sorts of interesting sites in this book. For example, Gulf Island National Seashore, Bellingrath Gardens, Round Island Lighthouse, Pascagoula Audubon Center. In fact, that's one I wrote, and I'd like to read just a little bit from that one. Pulling into the Pascagoula River Audubon Center's camp, one feels the peace brought on by the love of nature. A double row of freshly painted birdhouses dry in one corner. Morning doves attack a line of plastic and wood bird feeders. A boat stands at the dock, ready to bring visitors out on a nature-exploring adventure. The PRAC is housed in an old white home converted into use as a center, and nature is seen from the 70s, bringing the visitor into a world of unspoiled natural beauty. So these are wonderful little history, little places to visit. Uh, here's another one I'd like to read about. This is called Size Place. This is by Elaine McDermott, who has been on my show. It's called Size Place, where nice people come to have a nice time. On the corner of Division and Renoir, and Renoir Streets in Biloxi, cradled between IP and the Beauvoir Casinos, stands the past home of Size Place. Now closed for almost 40 years, this historic landmark will forever harbor the spirit of Size Seaman, the soul of the Biloxi music scene of the 1950s. It has pictures of Elvis Presley performing in the, in the show, and Hank Williams, who was over there in that event. And so this type of book is just full of history about the Friendship Oaks and the Lighthouses and uh, Mary Mahoney's and all sorts of history. Only $10 from the website. I want to encourage everybody out there to think about writing and about our local readers. You can get my, my book, all my books, and all the books of my guests on www.doctorsdreams.com. Have you ever thought about being a writer? It's surprisingly easy. I think you'll find that when we talk with Patty uh, Paris in just a few minutes. She decided she wanted to have a legacy for her family, and so she put together these books about her family, autobiographies, uh, the biographies about her father and her mother and her past history. I think everyone can do that. There are other types of poetry. Some people just like to write poetry. I'm a big poetry fan myself. It just gets your emotions out. It's easy to write. Just sit down with your paper sometime and, and put it together. This will be our second to last show for this season. This is the 10th show, and they'll all be found on YouTube. Support our sponsors as well. It, if you want to be a sponsor, contact me at that website, and we would love to get you on our TV show as well. So thank you for listening and coming, tuning us into your audience today, into your home. And stay tuned, because after this very short commercial break, we're going to welcome Patty Paris to our show, and we'll find out all about how to be a writer. Thank you.
Mississippi Gulf Coast and Neighboring Sites Anthology contains a collection of 25 essays about the history and tourist attractions across Mississippi's Gulf Coast. From features include the Round Island Lighthouse, Mary Mahoney's Old French House, Beauvoir, and the Friendship Oak. Read about the history of the Bell and Graff Gardens and now defunct Size Place, where Elvis Presley and Hank Williams performed, for only $10 at www.drstreams.com. Here at John Paul Barber Law Firm, we're here to listen to your problems and give you advice that we can give you from 30 years of experience practicing law here in Mississippi. We specialize in family law, wills and estates, estate planning, business formation, and business transactions. Stop. We also handle personal injury and immigration matters. Our number is 228-447-3522. We're here to help. Se habla espanol. Imagine an era of renewed prosperity underwritten by a job-creating economic stimulus, powered by abundant clean energy sources. America's clean energy sector already employs more people than the oil and gas fields. So imagine the jobs that would be created if we got serious. This is our future, America. This is the plan. Visit citizensclimatelobby.org. Working together, we can build a better, more prosperous future. Philip Levin's mystery suspense thriller, Inheritance, tells of a young newspaper reporter who is scheduled to receive a multi-million dollar inheritance, if she can survive. Each chapter begins with her daily column, and each gets her deeper into trouble with accused murderers stalking her, cocaine trafficking, and political corruption all stirred into the mix. A mysterious sailor may be her savior, or perhaps her worst nightmare. Available from Amazon.com, Front. Welcome back to Meet the Authors. Today's first guest is Patty Paris, who really has done quite a couple of things over this past few months, last few years that are remarkable. We're here to talk about her new books and uh, the biscuit stars. So, Patty, you, you told me you've been a writer since high school all your life. I have. Tell me about that. I started writing in high school when I did creative writing, and then I won a contest in high school, and that, of course, spurred me to want to be a writer. But in college, I didn't do any writing. I moved into psychology, which was my major, and European history. And that really was the formation of my love of biographies and learning about people. And so right now, what I love, love, love to do is write about people and hear people's stories. And I interview the elderly through church projects, 89 and 90 year olds. <laughs> and you interview 89 and 90 year old yes. people. Yes. And, and then you put together memoirs for them? Yes. And then you have one here, show us this I book. Do. This is Joe Teague, and he, he's 92, and he came to my writing class and asked someone to write his memoir. And I uh, told him I would. I told him I had not been published yet, and he said that was fine with him. And we sat down for, oh, 92 hours <laughs> total of work. You know, we visited for eight weeks. Well, that's right. wonderful. It's a yes. great way to... to create a memoir for these people and for the history itself. Yes. And Joe Tigg is a particularly interesting character from what you were telling me. I haven't had a chance to read the book myself, but he had, I'm going to pick this up, right. but it's, uh, he is a founder of Tigg Storage and Moving Company, Tigg Rug Cleaning, so he's a self-made man. Correct. But what was really interesting about him is the work he did in charity groups. Tell me about That's that. That's correct. He was the founder of Sertoma in Mobile, Alabama, and, and that now is founder of what? Sertoma. Sertoma. S-E-R-T-O-M-A. -E and what is Sertoma? It's an international civic organization, and their mission is speech and hearing. Ah. And so all of the proceeds, profits that they make, they put into speech and hearing. And they had a van that they drove around to all of the schools. They personally drove it to all of the schools and tested students, and also did it free for the community. So he wanted to help them raise money. Correct. And so he engineer, designed some some tournaments. Tell me about right. these tournaments. He 
learned how to bring professional bowling and professional golfers to Mobile, Alabama. He got the books to figure out how to have golf tournaments and bowling tournaments, and he got the men to come to Mobile, Alabama for a Satoma charity event. Huh. And big names did. They big were names. Yeah, I see some names. big names here right in the front of the, the book. I really can't read them without my glasses. <laughs> but you've got Arnold, Arnold Palmer. Palmer. Yes, Arnold Palmer came four times. And Gabe Brewer won one time. He, he was famous, maybe not as well known. Payne Stewart was in Mobile. He was not a winner, but he was a winner to us. He uh -huh. was great. It was, it was fantastic. That went on for over 20 years. 20 years he designed such a years. successful event. That yes, is fabulous. He, did. he and raised a lot of money for that charity organization. Yes, he did. And then tell me about the bowling. He was interested in bringing bowling events. When the golf tournaments ended for a while, he went into bowling events and he learned to bring professional bowlers to Mobile and they were at the Florida Bowl. And then there were the finals. They had the finals which lasted about a week in Mobile. And the last of the finals was held at the Mobile Civic Center. And it was hugely broadcast by ABC Broadcasting and all the big name bowlers were there. And big event for Mobile, Alabama. That is marvelous. It is. So you wrote this book and it's available on Amazon, huh? It is available on Amazon. I'll hold it up one more time. Yes. And we'll, we'll put a, uh, at the end, we'll talk, we'll get your email, so, I mean your website up there for that. Okay. So the other thing, I'll have it up right now. Let's see, no. That's all right. <laughs> Tell me about this. This is really interesting because this is something I've always wanted to do. In fact, I just, I did something similar recently. Right. But you, you I'm gonna put this up and people, all right. Yeah, there it is. Uh, this is a book about your father, right? Correct. Correct. Tell us about that. I've started before I wrote the Joe Teague book writing about my parents. Yeah. And uh, that was just a couple of years ago before I retired. My father was a World War II uh, doctor. And, a World uh, War II doctor? Yes, and my mother was oh. a World War II nurse, and they met on a hospital ship as they were going back and forth between Germany and New York. How romantic. Oh, it is. <laughs> and the stories are Wonderful. Oh. And afterwards, my mother worked at Bellevue Hospital in New York City. So I'm trying to still research more about her before I finish this. This is just one third of the book and it's the rough draft, but I needed to have it finished by Thanksgiving of last year so my relatives could read it and make sure they approved of the real stories I was telling about our parents. That is such a marvelous idea. I love it when people do that. So many times these histories die with our families and they they're do. gone. And, and now it's so easy to put these together. It just takes the effort. Uh, to talk with people and write them up and get the stuff together. And there are photographs in both these books, aren't there? Correct, right. I taught a class with a friend of mine, and we taught a class at church to people or anywhere you can, we did it for anyone who wanted to learn how to write memoirs. And we wrote a little booklet for them to follow, and we had about 25 participants who wanted to learn how to write memoirs. And so we taught them how to do it, and then since then I've spoken at several groups teaching them how to write write memoirs for their own families. So that would be great. I mean, so if, if, if somebody has a writing group or has an organization, they want to bring you in as a guest speaker right. to talk about how to put together memoir, you can, they right. can contact you through your website. That's is that correct. right? That's correct. So we'll put that up again in a few minutes about your website. Thank you. There it is now. <laughs> <laughs> so. Very good. And what are you working on now? You work, you've done this. So are you retired now? I am retired. I worked in the public school system as a psychology and European history teacher and then the last 14 years I was a high school assistant principal and I retired two years ago and that's when I really started writing heavily and quite often. I'm working on Morphing into Mother which is the second part of this book. One of the things I love to do actually are humor articles about my husband's and I travel a lot uh -huh. about our travels and they're um, magazine articles. So we have uh, Panic in Prague when we were lost in Prague and didn't speak the language, of course. <laughs> we have Tijuana t-shirts when we decided in uh, 2008 to go to Tijuana during the beheadings and um, find some t-shirts. And then we also have several humorous articles that we've done. Well, how wonderful. Where do you get those published? Um, Reader's Digest has not published me yet, but I've put it in there and Humor, Humor oh, yeah? magazine. I've sent off quite a number of them in the last month, so we'll wait and see if anyone picks them up. How wonderful. It's great to have this, like, once you retire, develop an extra career. It is and fun. And start uh, publishing. Of course, that's, I'm not retired, but I still do that, and yeah. uh, I, I just love the, the concept of writing and put, getting these ideas down. Right. And um, what, uh, so tell me about this, um, this travel. Tell me a little bit more about, uh, you're traveling a lot now that you're retired? 
We started before. We've yeah. gone to all 50 states, and they were amazingly wonderful. And then we've been to Germany a couple of times because my sister's boyfriend is from Germany, and he is, he is German. And we've been to Ireland, we've been to Czechoslovakia, Mexico a number of times. Wow. And so we try to write stories, I write stories, about our adventures there. And usually there's an adventure because we jump on public transportation, we jump on trains, we stay with the locals, and we have no earthly idea what we're doing. What a wonderful way to travel. <laughs> and we only marvelous. speak English. <laughs> so tell me about, you're an educator. Yes. And so you, I guess you have yes. special, because you're an educator, you have a more... In, uh, inside and more access into writing? Probably so, just because of education and being, um, I was an English, not an English major, but I was an English teacher when I first started teaching, yeah. and then I moved into psychology and history. And you were telling me that the Hillcrest uh, group, the Mason Mobile yes. with you, yes. uh, has uh, a critique group. Right. So I've always emphasized how important it is for people to have critique groups to improve right. their writing. To, Tell me a little bit about your critique group. Right. Hillcrest Writers meets once a week on Thursday mornings and everyone comes in and reads whatever they want to read, what they're working on. And the range is wide. I mean, they're poets, they're comedians, they're people who are very, very serious and dark. And we all read for about 10 minutes and then we have five minutes of critique from everybody. How we think they should improve, what they should do differently. And it's wonderful. That's great. It was so good to have you on your show, Patty. Thank you so much and, for uh, having me. And one more thing, you just show yes. that one more time. You can get her book on uh, Amazon.com Amazon. yes. and or from her website. So our next guest today is going to be Andrea Yeager, well-known local writer and columnist. So stay tuned. We'll be right back after these messages. I'm Dr. Azad Kabir, internal medicine board certified physician, and my focus will be preventive health, geriatric care, primary care. My name is Inez Kelleher. I have been practicing orthopedic surgery on the coast for 20 years. I treat patients with osteoporosis and osteoarthritis using nutrition, medications, injections, and lifestyle management. We are physician-only practices. Hi, I'm L. L. Lee. Are you a devoted Saints fan? or you know someone who is or was. If you are, you'll want to read my book, The Forever Saints Fan Club. It's a tribute to the New Orleans Saints and to four devoted fans who love them and love me unconditionally. You can get the books at Bay Books in Bay St. Louis or go to Amazon.com. $30 can really make a difference, and we're asking you to do just that. What will your $30 buy? A tent for a homeless person who has no place to sleep, or breakfast for 15 people who live in poverty, or a monthly bus pass for someone without transportation, and much, much more. Make a difference for a fellow Mississippian who needs our help. Give a $30 donation today. Mental Health Association of South Mississippi, promoting mental wellness since 1963. Here we are at the Oral O'Keefe Museum of Art. World famous architect Frank Gehry designed this campus. Right now we're in the museum store where you can see all sorts of wonderful things from local Mississippi artists. Um, we're coming up with a great show called Vintage Motorcycles, The Wind in Your Hair. The Oral O'Keefe Museum of Art has a really fantastic studio uh, for ceramics. We also have a number of workshops. In the Gallery of African American Art, we have a, a very famous Chicago artist named Paul Wandless. For a taste of area history, visit the Ocean Springs Museum of History. It's located at the Mary C. O'Keefe Cultural Center of Arts and Education on the second floor. That's at 1600 Government Street, Ocean Springs. This is Shaughnessy Printing. They were a commercial printing company, been in business for 67 years, founded in 1950. Do all kinds of commercial printing. Flyers, posters, wide format printing. Business cards, letterheads. Direct mail. Stationery. Brochures. Newsletters. Business cards, letterhead, envelopes, note cards, door hangers, rack cards, 
flyers. This is Shaughnessy Printing Company on 234 Kyvet Street. We'd like to have your business. How you doing? It's the doctor. Yeah, and I am the doctor, the doctor who writes. And I'm having a grand time today selling a lot of my books. And my best book is this one, The Tides of Mississippi. Six first place awards across the region. And I'm really, really proud of it. It's doing very well. Well, congratulations for such an honor. Thanks you know. so much. Hey, yeah, you. You're watching WXVO Ocean 7 TV. Make sure to like, follow, and share us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for exciting contests and giveaways. And remember, when you visit our sponsors, tell them you saw them here on Ocean 7. And welcome back to Meet the Authors. Thank you for inviting us into our home for our final segment for today's program. And we're really privileged to have Andrea Yeager here. Welcome, Andrea. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Philip, for asking. You bet. So as you know, Andrea has uh, been a writer from her whole life mm -hmm. and uh, features many different genres, many different articles. I think you're best known for right now, at least for your, your uh, recipes. Tell us about right. Tell us how you got into writing recipes. Well, when I was a little girl, my grandmother would punish me by making me stay in the kitchen with her because I was famous for crawling out the window or letting the window flap and she'd think I'd fallen out. <laughs> and so my punishment was to sit in the kitchen with her. But she didn't realize that that wasn't punishment for me. I loved being with her. She was a wonderful person and she was a fantastic cook. So I learned, I started learning to cook at a young age. And so um, I just started, when I started working at the Sun Herald, I, um, the was a call, that? that was in, oh gosh, uh, 1986. 1986, wow, 30 yeah. years you've been at the Sun Herald. Well, yeah, full time I was there 10 years okay. as managing editor. But um, we had, uh, they had a columnist that was leaving and they still had the food column and I thought well I'd like to do that that's kind of fun because I love to cook and I was always um, famous for doing parties and all when I lived in Houston and stuff so I thought well I'll do this you know and so I started writing a column and it was so much fun because I got to meet so many people some people I have never met you They're, get to meet I'm sorry but you you get to meet people while you're writing food columns how does that oh, work? Oh yeah definitely I run into people in the grocery store and oh. they'll say oh you're Andrea Yeager. Do you, I tried this recipe. That one really worked. You know, <laughs> unbelievable. There's a lady that lives in Long Beach that I had never met, but I we had corresponded through the food column, and we ran. I ran into her one day at Winn Dixie, and she said, Andrea. And I said yes, and I didn't know who she was. But then you know we got to be we talk and we run into each other all the time now. And there it happens. There was one gentleman that lived here in Ocean Springs. He's passed on now. But Robert Whitmire, some people may remember him, was famous for sending me articles. And said, and he could be, if it, there was a mistake, man, he was crotchety about that. <laughs> but it was so much fun. And he even moved to California to be with his uh, son. And he still sent me things from California. And I have a wonderful set of old um, recipes that he had compiled and everything. So it's just, it's fun. These people, it's like they become family. Yes, yeah, sure. Particularly now during the holidays when we got old St. Nick here oh, on yeah. the table. This is the time that people love looking at your recipes and, yeah. and trying them out. Tell us, which one of your favorite foods for Christmas? Mm, one of my favorite foods, probably seafood gumbo. Mm, seafood yeah. gumbo in the yeah. South, always a good choice. Yeah, <laughs> I have my mother-in-law's, my late mother-in-law's recipe, and with bar none, she made the best seafood gumbo and it was just crab and shrimp but it's a wonderful recipe and so i usually do that i was going to make it for thanksgiving but i took a stomach bug and i couldn't quite face the seafood market at that <laughs> so every recipe that you put out you've tested it out yourself yes and yes. served it to your family and yes. so far nobody's died we, no they haven't no. they haven't <laughs> uh, but we do have you know we do have recipes that readers send in, and if I have, see something that doesn't quite look right, I've read so many recipes yeah. that I can tell you if it's going to work or it's not going to work. I bet. You know, uh, and so sometimes I have to call and say, 
I think we've left something out here. Yeah. You know. And you have, we have your email we're going to be posting right. and it will tell people, there it is, uh, if they want to reach you to give a recipe or to ask right. you questions, you take directly onto your email. That's really I nice. I do. I do. And it's a way of communicating with them that they feel that closeness. And that's what this column is. It's a closeness. And, um, you so know. You don't just write uh, don't, the recipes. You no. prepare them and you, you cater with them. You're telling me that earlier about this group that you I work do. with. I do. I work with Women of Wisdom. Uh, I'm on the board and they needed what the caterer quit. And they said, Andrea, would you do this? And I said, sure, you know. And uh, so we, you know, my daughter and I uh, team up on uh, the second Wednesday of every month and fix lunch for everybody. Um, this, uh, this month we're having a, a grilled Caesar salad and cream of mushroom soup because I felt like everybody's so sick of party foods and heavy <laughs> food that we want to lighten up. Oh, that's always a good idea, especially with the holidays. Exactly. I've got to lighten exactly, up myself. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, and so how many people come to this, this meeting? Usually 60 to 70. Wow. And yeah. you cater for all those people. That's at the Night Center, right? At Second the night, Wednesday. Nonprofit. And they can use your email, find out more exactly, information about that. Exactly. Because it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a place where people can come and enjoy being together. And if you don't know people here on the coast or you've just moved here, it's a way of getting to know people and feel like, hey, there's somebody that cares about me. I'm not just out here. Because the first six months I lived on the coast, I spent crying because oh. I had moved here from Houston. I was used to the big city. And I just, I did, really didn't know that many people. And then I started working for the uh, school system. I actually, actually substituted uh, in Harrison County Schools and I got to know people. And then I went to work as an editor at the paper. So you do a lot of editing now too. I you do. Tell you. I do. And, and some, a lot of writers don't like being edited. No, they don't. <laughs> you know, I can tell you that from years in the newspaper business. Because, you know, sometimes we think that every word we write is a pearl of wisdom. Yes, it's our baby. <laughs> yes, it is. And it's not. I'm sorry to tell you, but it is not. Yeah. Um, we, we have to, it's like, Philip, you're a doctor. You would be, it would be like doing triage on yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to do that, you know. Um, it's the same way with a writer. You can't really edit your own stuff because you're too close to it. Yeah. You have to have that third, set, third, fourth set of eyes on it. I tell people that all the time. I say you really want to be a better editor, get other people to read it, go to critique groups like oh, we were talking exactly. with Patty earlier. And, and you just have to work on getting your, your work sparkling because there's so many little tricks anybody thinks it's like saying to someone oh i think i'll go home and build a ferrari in my garage well if you've never done anything with mechanics exactly. it's gonna be a disaster that doesn't mean you can't write doesn't mean you yeah. shouldn't start but get some help exactly well you know there were i used to work with some local authors you know that as you know in another job um and it was really fun working with them and trying to help promote their books and all but sometimes just a little bit of tweaking mm -hmm. on that story. A little bit of tweaking or a little bit of trimming would have made all the difference in that book. Absolutely. I see that all the time. When I do my anthologies, and I'm going to bring this one up again mm -hmm. we talked about earlier, when I do my anthologies, um, I have to edit every single piece. Even oh, from yes. really great writers, oh. everybody has to do this. And I again want to mention this book. This book is would be a great Christmas gift. We talked about this earlier. Support your local writers. Go ahead and get uh, your, go to your local uh, bookstore, ask who's a local writer and pick them up. Or you can go to my website and pick up this book or any of the books from our, our local writers. I'll have Patty's book on there as well from earlier. Well, Andrea, I certainly appreciate you coming out and oh, talking thanks. with us. We've had a wonderful discussion. Thank you. Good and to thank see you. all of you for coming and inviting us into your home. This is Meet the Authors, and we will be back. Uh, with more shows this season and next season, some great names as well. So remember, write, support your writers, and do some reading. And watch us on YouTube. We're producing all of our shows will be on YouTube as well. So uh, see you next time. Mm -hmm.